Beta blockers are a class of medications that are primarily used in the treatment of cardiovascular diseases, including tachycardia, hypertension, myocardial infarction, congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, cardiac arrhythmias, aortic dissection, and portal hypertension. In addition, they are also used in the treatment of non-cardiovascular diseases, such as hyperthyroidism, essential tremor, and as prophylaxis for migraine attacks. Before we begin our discussion on beta blockers, let's recall our physiology knowledge on the sympathetic nervous system. Nervous system can be divided into the central nervous system, which include brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system can be further divided into somatic system, which controls voluntary movements of the body, and the autonomic system, which controls involuntary movements. Autonomic system has two arms, the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. The autonomic system is made up of a relay between two neurons. Let's focus on just the sympathetic nervous system. Signals of the sympathetic system start from the hypothalamus. These signals are transmitted down the spinal cord until they meet the cell bodies of sympathetic preganglionic neurons. From there, signals exit the spinal cord through the preganglionic neuronal axons and reach the nearby sympathetic ganglions, which are made up of the cell bodies of postganglionic neurons. Postganglionic neurons are also called adrenergic neurons because they secrete the neurotransmitters epinephrine and norepinephrine. These two catecholamines activate adrenergic receptors on many different organs, which allows the sympathetic nervous system to trigger the fight-or-flight response that increases the heart rate and blood pressure, slows down digestion, and increases blood flow to the brain and muscles. There are two types of adrenergic receptors, alpha receptors and beta receptors, which have two subtypes, beta-1 and beta-2. Beta-1 receptors are located in the heart. Activation of these receptors by the sympathetic system leads to increased heart rate and contractility, which increase the cardiac output and blood pressure. Beta-1 receptors are also located in the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidneys. Activation of these receptors by the sympathetic system leads to the release of renin, which activates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or ROS. This will lead to sodium and water retention by the kidneys and ultimately, increased blood pressure. Beta-2 receptors are found in many parts of the body. They are seen in the smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels supplying the brain and skeletal muscles. Activation of these receptors cause vasodilation and increased blood flow to these tissues. They are also found in the bronchial smooth muscle cells. Activation of these receptors cause bronchodilation. Activation of beta-2 receptors in the gastrointestinal tract causes decreased motility. Beta-2 receptors found in the eyes help produce aqueous humor. They are found in the liver too. Activation of these receptors causes increased release of glucose into the blood. Beta-2 receptors found in the pancreas cause increased release of glucagon, which in turn increases blood glucose levels. Finally, beta-2 receptors stimulate an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase, which breaks down triglycerides into free fatty acids. Beta blockers are postsynaptic, anti-adrenergic medications that prevent beta-1 and beta-2 receptors from being stimulated by catecholamines. Beta blockers are subdivided into three generations. First-generation medications are non-selective, meaning that they act on both beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptors. These medications include propranolol, timolol, natolol, sotolol, and pindolol. Pindolol is actually a partial agonist of beta receptors. This means that when it binds to beta receptors, it stimulates the receptor weakly, but at the same time, it prevents the binding of more potent catecholamines. This is known as the intrinsic sympathomimetic effect. By blocking the beta-1 receptors in the heart, first-generation medications decrease the heart rate and contractility, leading to reduced oxygen and energy demands, as well as a drop in blood pressure. At the same time, beta-1 blockade in the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney decreases renin release, leading to less angiotensin and aldosterone release. This will ultimately lead to excretion of more sodium and water, 
and a reduced blood pressure. However, by blocking beta-2 receptors as well, they also cause some vasoconstriction in the blood vessels supplying the brain and skeletal muscle. This is typically very mild and does not have significant effects on blood pressure. And it is important to know that propranolol is the only first-generation medication that is able to penetrate the blood-brain barrier. Blocking of the beta-2 receptors in the bronchial smooth muscles causes bronchoconstriction, which obstructs the airflow. In the gastrointestinal tract, beta-2 blockade causes increased motility. In the eyes, aqueous humor production decreases. Liver releases less glucose into the blood, and pancreas also secretes less amounts of glucagon. So, blood glucose levels decrease. Finally, inhibition of lipoprotein lipase by beta blockers leads to accumulation of triglycerides in blood. Non-selective beta blockers are widely used in the treatment of hypertension and coronary artery disease. They are also used in the treatment of congestive heart failure. However, they should be used with caution in these individuals since they often rely on the sympathetic drive to maintain their blood pressure. In addition, non-selective beta blockers can be used to treat severe tachycardia, like in thyroid storm, which is an acute, life-threatening complication of hyperthyroidism. They are also being used in cases of severe anxiety. Moreover, propranolol is also used as a prophylactic to prevent migraine attacks. And timolol helps reduce intraocular pressure when applied topically on the eye. So, it is used in the treatment of glaucoma. Main adverse effects of beta blockers include bradycardia and hypotension, as well as fatigue. In addition, people may have dizziness, insomnia, and depression, particularly due to the CNS effects of propranolol. Since these medications can cause wheezing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath, they are contraindicated in patients with obstructive lung diseases such as COPD and asthma. Sometimes, diarrhea may also occur. Additionally, hypertriglyceridemia and hypoglycemia may also be seen. It is important to know that hypoglycemia may go unnoticed since beta blockers blunt the counter-regulatory effects and symptoms of catecholamines. This is especially dangerous in patients with diabetes since they take a number of other hypoglycemic medications. Second-generation beta blockers are selective for the heart and they are called cardioselective beta blockers. These include atenolol, metoprolol, bisoprolol, esmolol, and acibutylol. Like pindolol, acibutylol is a partial agonist of the beta receptor. By blocking beta-1 receptors, these medications reduce the heart rate and contractility and decrease renin release from the juxtaglomerular cells. This makes them suitable for the treatment of hypertension, coronary artery disease, tachycardia, and anxiety. Additionally, metoprolol and bisoprolol are commonly used in the treatment of congestive heart failure. Since these medications do not block beta-2 receptors, they do not cause bronchoconstriction and can be safely given to patients with COPD and asthma. Moreover, these are the preferred beta blockers for people with diabetes. Third-generation beta blockers block both beta-1 and alpha-1 receptors. Alpha-1 receptors are located in blood vessels, and they usually cause vasoconstriction. Administration of third-generation beta blockers reduces vasoconstriction, and they can be used in the treatment of hypertension. Common medications in this class include labetalol and carvedilol. Labetalol is the preferred medication in the treatment of hypertension during pregnancy. And it is also used to treat hypertensive emergency. In addition to being an antihypertensive, carvedilol also has antioxidant properties. And it prevents blood vessel from thickening. Major adverse effect of these medications is orthostatic hypotension.